Let's close our eyes for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for this time. We do bless your name once again as we come together. And we want to share your word with one another at this time. We're praying. You bless your people in the reading and the study of your word tonight in Jesus' name. You're developing us as leaders. And we're asking, O oh Lord, you will develop your people. We will be the militant and able and capable and effective, fruitful ministers will to be in Jesus' name. That Lord, in our ministries, your name will be glorified. There will be genuine converts born into the kingdom. And the people of God, under our leadership, will be well developed. They will be seasoned, capable saints who are able to win souls to the Lord. Bless us together tonight once again. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Look at that. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Tonight, we're looking at the message refreshed and reestablished by the word. We have been refreshed as we have come here. We have listened to many ministers of God, and these dynamic, fiery ministers of God have really thrown light into some different different areas of our lives and where we have been weak the word from his servants have made us strong and we have been established in the word of the lord and we have really felt the presence of god as we have been together here now to be constantly refreshed we need the continual dew and rain of god's life-giving and life-sustaining word in our hearts in our lives in our souls as we are refreshed then we're able to refresh others with the word of grace or the word of truth or the word of love or the word of power and with the word of faith built up strengthened encouraged comforted reassured and re-established by the word ourselves then we are able to stand firm on solid ground to establish and to re-establish others in the soul saving and the soul keeping word of God. That's why, as we're almost bringing the conference, the Congress to a conclusion, we're thinking and we're looking into the word how to refresh ourselves, how to reestablish ourselves by the word of God and in the word of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 2. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 2. My doctrine shall drop as the rain my speech shall distill as a dew as a small rain upon the tender herb and as the showers upon the grass hear the man of God Moses speaking on behalf of the Lord is saying the doctrine of the word of God will come down like rain that refreshes us will distill upon us like dew and then it says it will be like on the tender plant as showers up upon the grass this is the word of God we have learned this is the word we have known and this is the word that has blessed our lives and this is the word we are going with and we are going to bless the lives of other people in Isaiah chapter 62 reading verse 6 and verse 7 Isaiah 62 verse 6 I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. The Lord is telling us that he has made us watchmen over the various localities and communities and countries and provinces, cities and states and regions and local governments where we come from. And it says, day or night, we must not hold our peace. We keep on making mention of the Lord. Give him no rest. Till he establish until he make Jerusalem or your city or your community or your country a praise in the earth. In verse 10, go through. Go through the gates. Prepare ye the way of the people. Cast off, cast off the highway. Gather out the stones. Lift up a standard for the people we have come here and the lord has revealed the standard to us if all these our ministers that minister to us if they were not bold if they were not forthright 
they will not be able to lift the standard before you they have done it to you we have done it to you you go ahead then and go back to all the places we came from and you go and tell the other other people you have seen how these ministers of god as they had opportunity the rest of us many of us here could do the same thing or even better if we had the opportunity but at least the few of us who have been able to come here to share you have seen how we went through the word of god and we cast up the stones and we gather the pebbles and took them out of the way and we lifted up a standard for the people of god the lord is challenging you is challenging me that what others have done here in our presence we too we will go and we will do the same thing in verse 11 behold the lord has proclaimed unto the end of the world say ye to the daughter of zion behold thy salvation cometh behold thy reward is with him and his work is before him and he shall call them the holy people the redeemed of the lord and thou shalt be called sought out a city not forsaken as we're going back home we're going with the totality of the word of god we have it in our hands already and by the grace of god we have it in our hearts in second timothy chapter 3 reading from verse 16 all scripture old testament and new testament all scripture the historical part the prophetic part the narratives all scripture the new testament or the gospels and the epistles all scriptures the doctrine the teaching the prophecy the promises the warning the commandments all scripture everything that we read here all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god may be perfect really furnished unto all good works the word of god has come to us and the word of god has prepared us we will do well we will do good this work of god will go through you and go to your congregations and go to your communities in jesus name the three points we're going to consider number one the place of the word the place of the word number two the power of the word the power of the word number three progress through the word number one the place of the word in a faithful minister the place of the word in a faithful minister number two the power of the word in a fruitful ministry what makes a ministry fruitful it is the power that is in the world number three the progress through the word for a fulfilling ministry number one the place of the word in a faithful minister the lord has called you to be faithful he has given you grace to be faithful i know i can see from the way you pray and from the way you are responding to every message of the word of god even when you ought to be tired yet you don't show tiredness i can see you want to be a faithful minister you are going to be faithful you are not only going to be faithful you'll be fruitful as well in jesus name my brothers and sisters i want to encourage you whatever you have seen any of us has done is by the grace of god and that same grace of god is available for you and the good stories of church growth you are hearing happening over here happening over there will happen in your own location too in jesus name what has built us up without taking anything away from many of our ministers and from many of the people who have ministered to us if you have noticed very well you will see that we have different educational levels from the way we talk from the way we read and from the way we explain things and yet you will find whatever our educational level and whatever you know it might you might hear a person you say it looks like this person is not very very high in education some of us are like that and yet you can see the power flowing through you can see the unction of the spirit of god flowing through i'm telling you something don't worry about your education don't worry about your status the same power 
the same grace, the same anointing that we have seen in all these ministers that have ministered to us and a lot of those other ministers that are sitting down gracefully and they are receiving the word from their colleagues. The same grace, the same unction, the same power will flow through your ministry in Jesus' name. If that is going to be the case, the, the case what is the place of the word of God in a faithful minister? The point I'm making is where at what point in what place is the word of god actually located where should it be look at someone i'm reading from verse one someone reading from verse one all through to verse three it tells us here in someone verse one blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners nor seateth in the seat of discomfort but his delight is in the law of the lord in his law does he meditate day and night that shows you where the word of the lord is in a faithful minister it is in the heart it is in the mind it's in the soul it's in the brain it's in the inner man of this faithful minister because he delights in the law of god of the lord in his law does he meditate in his mind in his heart in his soul day and night it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water and then he says that bring it forth his fruit in his season his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper that's you you are going to prosper you will the work of god will prosper in your hand we're told in psalm 119 psalm 119 in psalm 119 it tells us in verse 9 wherewith that shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word with my whole heart have i sought thee Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Listen to this now. Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. What place does the word of God occupy in a faithful minister? The faithful minister puts the word of God, the word of the Lord, in his very heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Verse 43. And take not thy word of truth out of my mouth, for I have hoped in thy judgment. The word is in your mind. The word is in your mouth. And the word is in your message. When the word is in your mind and the word is in your mouth, then the word will appear in your message as well. And then in verse 105, 105, it tells us, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In verse 114, it tells us, Thou art my hiding place, my shield, I hope in thy word 133 that is verse 133 order my steps in thy word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me 148 mine eyes prevent the night watches that i might meditate in thy word 172 my tongue shall speak of thy word for all thy commandments are righteousness and you see then as we look at all this word it's telling us where the word of god ought to be the word of god must fill your heart must fill your mind must fill your mouth and then must be in the message of the minister the word must always be placed before our eyes influencing our thoughts influencing our desires guiding our steps and guiding our decisions and directing the ministry that the lord has placed in our hand when the word of god is occupying a very conspicuous place like that tell me what the result is going to be you'll be fruitful in the ministry can i just put everything together for you that the place the word of god should have in your life in your ministry and in the church in general number one a place of preeminence number two the priority in the pulpit number three prominence in all programs 
Number four, principles and pattern of practice. And then number five, the pointer and the perimeter of our prayers. Number six, the proof of progress. Number seven, preservative from perversion. Number one, you see the word of God show up, a place of preeminence. I'm sure you know that already. And I can see that anytime any of the places are visited in deeper life, whether in Nigeria or in Ghana or in Cameroon or in Central Africa, West Africa, East and Southern Africa, I can testify. I can tell the church here, the headquarters, everywhere I have gone in deeper life, whether they're a small congregation or a moderate congregation, I have seen that the place of preeminence is given to the word of God. I'm only encouraging you the good thing you have been doing and you have put the word of God at the center stage in the church let it continue like that number two is the priority on the pulpit when we come to when we come over here and you can bear me witness you have had our preachers preaching and in your various uh, various zonal conferences you have seen our preachers you have seen as they facilitate the meetings we had the priority in the pulpit is the word of god number three the prominence in all our programs show me any program that a deeper life overseer a deeper life national overseer state overseer region overseer or even our local pastors any program they are putting together when they send the reports to the headquarters i see something there i see that in all the programs you can see the prominence of the word of god number four the principle and the pattern of our practice uh, everybody knows that our final court of authority is the word of the lord but let me tell you something there is the general court and in the general court when you try to deal with a case and then they give a verdict and we're still having doubt we say can that be true then we go to the supreme court and then whatever the supreme court says that is final as you go to the bible you read old testament you read new testament you're trying to solve a problem you're trying to take a decision the general court is the word but when you want to find out are we sure that this decision is right are we sure that this conclusion is right we go to the supreme court the words of jesus is the word personified in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory of the only begotten of the father full of grace and full of truth when you look at the word of god in general that is the court of appeal that is a court you say okay according to this according to this maybe we can do it like this they will say uh -uh, uh -uh. we're not satisfied yet what is the final word then we go to the supreme court we go to the words of jesus for example there are people that will argue about water baptism and when you go to the house in the name of jesus in the name of the lord jesus in the name of the lord and then somebody says we can baptize in the name of jesus another person says in the name of jesus only another person says in the name of the lord jesus another person says in the name of jesus christ another person says in the name of christ we say uh -uh, there's confusion here now we have listening to all of you because we are appealing to the general court let's go to the supreme court what did the supreme one the word personified what did he say he said go ye teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost we say aha uh -huh, that is final because the words of jesus is a final authority and it's the supreme court and he has declared it and you stand by that the point is the principle and the pattern of our practice must be the word of god i said number five it is a pointer and the perimeter of our prayers you know when you are praying for example all churches pray all religious people pray how are we to pray take for example you have an enemy and some people will say it's all right to pray that god should destroy them because they're like firewood and they are meant for the fire they are the enemies of the people of god that's what they say what do you say we go again to the word of god we go again to the word of god now if you read in the psalms you say look at the way david prayed uh-huh that's the court go to the supreme court 
the final court of appeal the words of jesus christ and he said love your enemies and do good to them that persecute you and pray for your enemies who say ah, that is final because we've gone to the final court and this word of god is a pointer in the direction we ought to pray is the perimeter of our prayer that is it is the territory of our prayers any prayer we pray must not go beyond that territory or that perimeter it is the word of god that will dictate that will determine how we pray and then number six the word of god is a proof of progress in our ministry how are the people obedient to the word of god how are they relating to the word of god that's the proof and then the preservative from corruption and perversion that should be the center central place we put the word of god point number two the power of the word in a fruitful ministry if there is anything that makes the ministry of a child of God, a man of God, a woman of God, fruitful, it is the word of God. We're told in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. It is this word of God that is the power unto salvation you'll find some people on the evangelistic field when they are preaching messages on salvation they'll be telling stories they'll be making illustrations illustrations are good but what do the people carry home what do the people remember they must remember the word of god because for a fruitful ministry the power the cause for a fruitful ministry is the word of god and this gospel the word of the gospel is the power unto salvation in psalm 19. psalm 19 reading from verse 7 the law of the lord is perfect converting the soul it's not what we're looking for the conversion of people and the word of god the law of god now you will find out that the word of god is called the law of god it's called the testimony of the lord it's called the statutes of the lord it's called the commandments of the lord it's called the fear of the lord it's called the judgments of the lord it's called quite a lot of other names and titles but it's the same thing verse 7 the law of the lord is perfect converting the soul the testimony of the lord is sure making wise the simple the statutes of the lord are right rejoicing the heart the commandments of the lord are pure enlightening the eyes the fear of the lord is clean enduring forever the judgments of the lord are true and righteous altogether more to be desired are they than gold yea than much fine gold sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb moreover by them is thy servant warned and in keeping of them there is great reward there's great reward because it makes you fruitful it makes you actually achieve what the lord wants you to achieve in the ministry my brothers and sisters and, and fellow ministers i'm challenging you you could be challenging me too if you are here preaching i'm challenging you that we should keep to this word of god and this word of god is what will make our churches strong and will make our churches to be built on the solid foundation will be unshakable in our commitment and in our faith in ephesians chapter 6 ephesians chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 16 above all taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the word of the spirit is the word of god inspired by the spirit of god the sword of the spirit which is the word of god god this word will mightily work in the hearts of the hearers in the hearts of members of the congregation if we preach the word of god faithfully and sincerely it tells us in first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 for this cause also thank we god without ceasing because when you receive the word of god which ye had of us ye received it not as the word of men but as it is in truth the word of god which effectually worketh also in you that believe that is as you preach the word as you explain the word as you expound the word 
And as you apply the word to the children, to the youth, to the teenagers, to the campus students, and to the mothers and fathers, and to the parents, and to everyone in the church, to the highly place and the lowly place, and we apply the word of God, it is the word of God that will work effectually and effectively in everyone as they believe. As you look at the word of God, you know the word of God has power. Number one, it has creative, saving power of God. It has a creative power a dynamic power that it transforms the lives of the people number two it has converting power the power to convert the power to turn lives around number three it has reproductive power reviving and reproducing spiritual life in the hearers so if you want spiritual life the reproduction of the christ kind of life christ-like life in the members of the church give them the word because it is the word of god that has the power to reproduce christ and spiritual life in every one of us number four it has the power to produce faith faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of god and it produces great faith it produces the overcomer's faith it produces conquering faith it produces miracle walking faith it produces faith for christ-like ministry faith that sees nothing impossible if you want the people of god under your leadership under your pastoral ministry to be full of faith every kind of faith and great things taking place in that local church where god has put you preach the word number five it gives strengthening power or ability that is it is the word of god that when we drink it like water and when we take it like honey and when it breaks us like you know like hammer and brings conviction upon us and injects into us spiritual life it strengthens us and it gives us divine ability number six it has healing power this word of god it is medicine from heaven that heals all sicknesses and all diseases number seven it has the power of fire and the power of a hammer crushing hard rocks crushing rocky hearts and melting hard hearts and replacing lukewarmness with zeal and fervent love that's why in your church as the lord has placed you there you go back home now you've been doing it before you do it more you've been doing it before you do it more faithfully you've been doing it before you do it with more concentration the power of the spirit walking with the power of the scripture unhindered will result in a fruitful rewardable ministry i come to point number three progress through the word for a fulfilled fulfilling ministry if we are going to see progress in our ministry and this is the year of progress for you i said this is the year of progress for you already the lord has told us uh, through me and through the rest of our leaders that we look up we're not looking down we look forward we're not looking back because this year you will succeed this work of god will grow without bounds in your hand in jesus name and if we're going to make that kind of progress and we're going to make it that kind of progress how are we going to make such a kind of progress it is through the word progress through the word for a fulfilling ministry look at J look at joshua chapter one in joshua chapter one i'm looking at it from verse eight then i'll back up again to verse three joshua chapter one reading from verse eight this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein according to all that is written therein my brothers and sisters if there is anything that has helped us in this ministry it is that we do not relegate some part of the word of god to the background we don't say that's difficult that's a no-go area no you cannot practice that now and people have thought that if we practice the totality of the word of god they thought that we will not progress that we will not grow but we told them that the word of god is given to us to make progress and to grow and to move forward and we have kept this totality of the word of god according to the word of god and we have proved 
that God is right of course he's always right whether we can prove it or not but all the same our experience has shown us has convinced us has proved unto us beyond any shadow of doubt that following the word of God actually brings progress and brings success that's exactly what the Lord has said for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success give me a good amen there you know in verse 3 every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon you are going with the word of god you are going with the word of his authority and every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon the lord has given to you as i said unto moses in verse 5 there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life claim this promise stand on this promise it is yours no evil power will stand before you i said no evil man will stand before you you will not complain about witches and wizards anymore because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world now you are stronger than them now you are higher than them now you are greater than them if they meet you in the dream they will fall if they meet you during the day they will fall this work that the lord has committed in your hand nobody will make you to fail there shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life as i was with moses so i will be with you i will not fail thee nor will i forsake thee be strong you have a reason to be strong the lord is your shepherd you have a reason to be strong is the captain of your salvation you have a reason to be strong the cross calvary has paid the whole price you have a reason to be strong resurrection power of the lord jesus christ is upon your life you have a reason to be strong the captain of your salvation has never lost any battle you have a reason to be strong because satan is now under your feet you have a reason to be strong because no man shall ever stand before you you have a reason to be strong because in inside you is the eternal rock of ages and all around you is the eternal arm that is holding you and the promise of god they are yes and amen for you and all of heaven and the angels of heaven they are ministers unto you you have been reason to be strong you will be strong be strong and of a good courage for unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which i swear unto thy fathers to give unto them in isaiah chapter 59 isaiah chapter 59 i'm reading to you from verse 21 isaiah chapter 59 reading to you from verse 21 here he tells us look at this as for me this is my covenant with them says the lord my spirit that is upon thee and my words which are put in your mouth has god put his word in your mouth does god have a covenant with you the words which i put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth nor out of the mouth of thy seed when you finish even before you finish your children will be taken off the baton your children will serve the lord this same word this same standard will be in the life and in the hand of your children now out of the mouth of thy seed seed says the lord from henceforth and forever as a result of that what will follow look at verse 1 chapter 60 60 chapter chapter 60 verse 1 arise shine are you ready to shine for thy light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon the behold for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but the lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee the gentiles shall come to thy light the unbelievers will be converted to thy light and all the people that are outside now they will come into thy light and kings and kings highly pleased people shall come to the brightness of thy rising lift up thine eyes round about and see all they that gather together they come to thee thy son shall come from far i said thy son shall come from far thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side then thou shalt see and flow together thine heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee and the forces of the gentles shall be shall come unto thee in verse 20 thy son shall no more go down neither shall thy moon withdraw itself for the lord shall be an everlasting light and the days of thy morning shall be ended 
days of tears days of sorrow you have accepted the word you are standing by the word and you believe the word and you are going back home with the word the days of sorrow the days of mourning and the days of crying they are ended in jesus name thy people shall all be righteous they shall inherit the land forever the branch of my planting the work of my hand that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand. A little one shall become a thousand. Where are you? Are you the one we are talking about? I said a little one shall become a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. This is your year of progress. Rise up and thank the Lord. It's my year. It's my year. My year of success. My year of progress. I have got it. You have got it. The blessing of the Lord is upon your life. You will succeed. You will prosper. You are going with confidence in the word of God. You are preaching the word of God everywhere you go. You are standing upon the word everywhere you go. And this word of God will lift you up. It, it will give you progress. It will lift up your ministry. You are not down anymore. You are up. And as you go with the word of God, no evil man will be able to stand before you. As you go with the word of God, you will preach. Souls will come into the kingdom. And the resources of the Gentiles that they are still hiding, as these Gentiles are converted, they will come with their resources. Your church will not be poor. Your church will not be the relegated to the background. You will shine. The light of the Lord will shine upon you. This is your time. This is your time. This is your time. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. This is your day. This is your day. This is your day. This is your day. You are going with the word of God tomorrow. Every enemy will flee before you. Every difficulty will flee away from you. You will succeed. 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 The power of the Lord is the power of the word. It's the power of the spirit. It's there. It's there. It's there. And you are going with assurance. And you are going with power. And you are going with authority. You will succeed. The Lord has chosen you. The Lord has appointed you. The hand of the Lord is upon you. The anointing of the Lord is upon you. And the word of God is in your mouth. Go and succeed. Go and succeed. Go and succeed. You will not fall before any man. All the evil men, all the evil powers, all the hindrances of the gospel will fall before you. You will march on into victory and into success. Believe the Lord. Believe the Lord. You've got the victory already. There is victory in your heart. There is victory in your soul. You will do it. You will do it. The Lord has enabled you and the Lord has done something here for you you are taking it back home you cannot fail you cannot fail you cannot fail every good thing you have heard from any of the ministers here is already imparted into your life you are going with anointing it will carry you through amen I am saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. I am saying thank you, Jesus. Are you saying thank you, Jesus? I am saying thank you, Jesus. Are we saying thank you, Jesus? Amen. God bless every one of you.